but help if I turn things on. I'm John Rotiers from the consortia office, Down County Consortia office. And right now you're in the session that we're going to be talking about the Visual Arts Center at Einstein and the, um, the uh, program, the presentation from uh, Edison High School. Um, right now I'd like to introduce Maggie Harris from the Visual Arts Center to talk about that and then she'll turn it over to Einstein, um, Edison. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And this is just the next right, right mm -hmm. there, right? Okay, good evening. So my name is Maggie Harris, and I'm one of the teachers at Albert Einstein um, and uh, working with the Visual Arts Center. So let me tell you a little bit. Some of you may know or may not know a lot about us. Uh, it is a magnet visual arts center. Okay, so it's like it's a, uh, all visual art. Um, and we are a small program, but we're housed in Albert Einstein High School. So... Uh, we are about 43 years old. It's probably one of the oldest magnet programs in the county. And as you see, application only. So um, a little bit about the Visual Arts Center. We are helping students develop a visual portfolio. And it can be in digital. It can be painting, drawing, mixed media. Uh, and students that might even want to go into fashion or animation. But it is... Um, some of our students, we will have them for four years. You can apply a lot of you as eighth graders sitting over here. Uh, but uh, again, you can enter every year. You can apply every year. So that is the one great thing about the program. So in, as you could see, this wonderful grand list of colleges uh, and major art universities and colleges like MICA and RISD and SVA. But we also send students to a lot of liberal arts schools that are also looking for visual artists and are, that have strong art program or they have dual enrollment programs. So we are uh, preparing students, preparing their portfolio within, we like to get them for four years, but sometimes we have students that apply junior year, 10th graders. So just remember as you sit here, uh, just keep that in mind, okay? So uh, next thing is that, so what do you, uh, what are some of the important facts about the, the VAC? So the classes are double and triple period, so which means like 90-minute classes and senior year could be triple period. Uh, and most of our students that are coming from different areas of MCPS, if they're not part of the DCC, uh, then we are expecting that you will transport them. So that's the one down part. But uh, once they are accepted, you could, the students can transfer, full, become a full-time student at Albert Einstein High School, or they could decide to commute, which is like cross-scheduled students, and they would come in the morning, period one and two. So there's a lot of little details, but overall, um, you know, it really is, uh, gives an environment in which all the students that are visually committed and in working together, you know, developing their portfolio, and myself and my colleague, Jane Walsh, uh, have some achieved that. So um, about, you know, application and how to apply to the VAC. So October 4th, just like with all the other magnet programs, um, October 4th to November 1st, the online application will be open. And once your name is on that list, then you will get uh, a date that is generated that will let you know that you're going to come for two hours, more likely on um, a Saturday. Uh, but once uh, that happens, then you are, hopefully you are already preparing two to three observation drawings and five to seven works that are, you're doing, whether it's in the sketchbook, imagination work, uh, even digital work that you're preparing. Uh, so you're presenting your portfolio to us, and there's a little bit other elements of uh, talking to you and just uh, seeing, seeing your ideas. Now, October 24th uh, would be a great day for you to come out to Albert Einstein High School. We have open house, and you can meet our students. You could see our space, and you can really see the range of work and portfolio that is developed by our students, and, uh, and we can you know, uh, give you a lot more information and you'll have a good idea of what to expect on application day. Now, I have a table outside. So once um, you are able to come out, I could talk to you further in giving you information. Okay, thank you so very much. And now Edison is next. Here you go.
Thank you. Good evening. At this time, what I'd like to do is go to the Edison website. Can we pull that up? Uh, you can, if you could pause right at the video, it'd be perfect. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I am Sean Kraza, and I'm the principal at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Uh, before I begin with my presentation, though, can I see if we have any students in the audience from Briggs Cheney Middle School? We have a few? Okay, perfect. I, about four years ago, I had the honor of being an assistant principal at Briggs Cheney Middle School. And the best part about being at a school and seeing students go from middle school to high school is you see how they grow and evolve and they discover what their interests are. So I've had several students that I know from Briggs Cheney Middle School choose to come to Edison. And that's the exciting part of being in the school system. So. I always believe our students tell the best story about our programs. And so last year when we opened our brand new state of the art building, we had a time, we had time and an opportunity to interview students, capture their work, find out what they were doing at Edison. And when you visit our school website, if you just type in Edison MCPS on your phone, you can queue up our website. All the information I'm gonna to present to you is accessible on that site. And so I'd like to begin with our video clip and hear from our students. Thomas Edison High School of Technology is the Keystone Institute for College and Career Readiness. When I graduate, I hope to attend uh, Korea University, go further into architecture, or also look into civil engineering. At Edison, we offer so many opportunities for students as they attend classes and learn from industry-trained teachers. Everybody is able to achieve in Edison. This is my first step to go to college. It's good because these programs are free. So if I were to go to cosmetology school, it would be a lot of money, but I can do it for here for free. The 18 exciting programs at Thomas Edison High School of Technology are open to all MCPS students. Free bus transportation is available for all students to and from their home school. So while you get to dive deep into the courses you've chosen at Edison, you can still participate in all the extracurricular activities at your home school, including the exciting arts and athletic events that happen throughout the year. College and career readiness, that's our focus at Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Our students can earn college credit, industry certification, and even begin an apprenticeship in high school. It's a good choice for me to start off my future employment. I want to get definitely a degree in nursing, and I want to look into sonogram technology. The opportunities at Edison give you a chance to see what a career in graphic design, automotive technology, or healthcare is like at no cost. Identifying a career you will truly love before starting college can save you a lot of money. It's extremely fun and it's very different than what you would be learning in your other classes. And if you feel ready to go to work after graduation, many of the pathways at Edison provide opportunities to obtain professional certifications that you can use to get that first job. It gives students opportunity to learn things that they probably wouldn't learn in their normal school and everybody here will walk out with something so that they can go off and have a real job. We get opportunities that you don't get in any other school. We get to do Skills USA, which is an amazing competition where we get to learn a lot about ourselves. The Skills USA competitions are exciting and competitive events that help you excel in your field. Competitions begin locally and continue to state and national levels. Skills USA makes students career ready, productive, and promotable. You work with people that is not from your high school, that is from other high schools, and you interact with them. Get started by taking a tour. Our student tour guides will tell you what Edison is all about. Then visit your homeschool counselor and fill out an application, or fill out an application online. Start preparing for your future at Thomas Edison High School of Technology the Keystone Institute for College and Career Readiness in Montgomery County. So traditionally, there 
our students from all 25 high schools in Montgomery County that have an opportunity to access our programs. And so what that means is students go to their home high school, they complete all their academic studies, math, science, social studies, English, and then they choose to come to Edison for one of our 18 career readiness programs. And so three years ago when I started as principal, I was trying to understand why students were choosing Edison and what they were doing with it after they earned their industry certification. And I discovered a pattern and just in talking with students, so for example, I'll take cosmetology. It's a three-year program. Uh, but on my first day of school at Edison when I was principal, we um, had a student, Jackie, that said, I've been here for the past three years. I believe our programs are equally as important as any other program in Montgomery County. And when I graduate and walk across the stage, I want to be recognized. I want to have an Edison cord. And so to her credit, I said, I agree with you. And I met with all 25 high school principals and they too agreed. So we started this new tradition that every year at the end of the year, we have a signing day where students are recognized for earning that industry certification, entering into the workforce, entering into college or entering into an apprenticeship. Well, Jackie, actually completed her cosmetology degree is cutting hair on the side and she had uh, earned the opportunity to go to college to study law. So she had seven different colleges offer the scholarships. And so one of the ways I discovered is that our students are going to college and they're using the industry certification to earn a little extra money on the side. Uh, we have other students that take an interest in the field. So I had uh, student Gabriella that uh, went into our electrical program thinking, oh, I want to become a master electrician. But after she had an opportunity to go through our electricity course and learn how to watch wire up a residential house uh, because our students actually go off campus and they design and build a residential house. So uh, Gabby decided instead of being a master electrician, she wanted to go to college to earn a degree in electrical engineering. And then we have other students, uh, take Amanda for example, that decided she wanted to be an entrepreneur. And so after she earned her industry certification, she started working in the cosmetology field. And she came back last year to see our new building and said, Mr. Kraza, she said, now I want to open up my own salon. So I am taking college classes at Montgomery College in business. In the next three to four years, when I get my business degree, I intend to take my industry certification, combine it with my business degree and open up my own salon. So whether students go to college and use the industry certification on the side or advance into college or create their own business, there are certainly a variety of different ways you can use the program. If you click on the link that says open house and tours, this is how you schedule a tour at Edison. We have a schedule and Dr. Carlton, our career technology coordinator, our special programs coordinator, she will schedule a tour. You can come visit our program. And then also in the next two weeks, if you're interested in touring our building on October 15th, from 6 to 8 p.m., you'll be able to meet our teachers. We'll have students present. You can talk with them, ask questions, and explore our building. If you go back out to the Wheaton Edison Partnership, so for a number of years, the one way students accessed our programs was by going to their home high school and then choosing to come to Edison the other half of their day. Well, over the past couple years, we've seen growing interest in our career readiness programs. And so what we've started to do is design a partnership with Wheaton High School. So if you're a student in the Northeast Consortium area, you have the option of applying to Wheaton High School and Edison Partnership. So if you have an interest in engineering and construction management, if you have an interest in information technology and cybersecurity, or health and medical sciences, or restaurant management and hospitality, you could apply to Wheaton High School and have the opportunity to directly access our programs. So that is a second option that students can choose as early as this school year. 
And uh, I will also be set up out at the information table. I'll be glad to answer any questions you have. And thank you for coming to join us this evening. Thank you, Mr. Kraza and Ms. Harris for providing us with information about the Visual Arts Center and the Thomas Edison High School of Technology. Um, the next presentation will begin at 7. Buenos tardes, familias. Bienvenidos. Para los que prefieren, tenemos una presentación en español en la anfitera A107. I'm glad that we got the uh, website Edison. stuff yeah. working. He didn't tell me how quick that was coming up. So you find your mouse wherever it is. Oh, there it is. You click on the top and you drag and drop it over. And then you hit slideshow. Okay. And you hit from beginning. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'm yep. not sure you'll be able to do that again. Okay. There's a couple minutes in between.
a los estudiantes. A la gente habrá una, una cita sobre todo las escuelas en el área. Por favor, subir a la doctora.
I'm gonna take those last two chairs right there. Where are the others? I don't know. Good evening and welcome to the Northeast Consortium High School Options Fair Lottery Choice and Signatures presentation. My name is Kathy Logue and I work in the Division of Consortia Choice and Application Program Services and I will be your host this evening. I'm also joined by students and signature coordinators from all three of our NEC high schools. Parents, first of all, I want to thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules as you help your students learn about special opportunities that exist in our NEC schools as they begin to consider and plan for their next step, the transition into high school. My hope for you is that when you leave here this evening that you say what I always think when I hear our students and coordinators speak. I wish I could go back to high school. These exciting programs certainly didn't exist when I went to school. So to accomplish this, I'll start this evening's presentation with an overview of the choice process and the timeline, and then we'll hear from our signature coordinators and their students. At the conclusion of our presentation, we will all be available to answer individual questions at the tables in A hallway, which is right outside of the auditorium. In addition, if you care to learn about application programs that are interest-based and criteria-based, there's another presentation at eight right here in the auditorium. And hopefully you had an opportunity to take a look at your agenda because that's all spelled out on your agenda. So let's get started. I wanna start with the very basics. The Northeast Consortium, which I'll refer to as the NEC from this point forward, contains three amazing high schools. High school students, Representatives and coordinators, if you could please stand when I announce your school. James Hubert Blake High School, Paint Branch High School, and Springbrook High School. So in the NEC, students do not automatically articulate to one school. They fill out a lottery choice form to rank order their preference of high school. Our mission tonight is to give you an overview of the signature and academy programs that exist at our NEC high schools. Hopefully you should have received a yellow summary sheet when you arrived, and if you refer to this handout, you'll see the address of each school, as well as the names of their coordinators, their contact information, and the school's website. I encourage you to explore the signature programs on these websites as you begin to gather information which will help you and your child prepare to submit your lottery choices in late October. First, I'd like to address what do the NEC high schools have in common? Well, first of all, they're all going to offer you a comprehensive high school curriculum, meaning they're going to offer you all the courses that you need to fulfill your graduation requirements by obtaining the 22 credits you need to graduate. Courses in subjects like biology, geometry, U.S. history, English, English all those subjects you need in order to make it to hopefully what your next step is, college. They all also offer rigorous coursework in honors and advanced placement courses where you can actually earn college credit if you score high enough on the exams. They all offer services to support those learners that need special accommodations which might be spelled out on an IEP or possibly they need support because English is a second language. 
They also have a lot of fun sports and a variety of extracurriculars, so get involved. They also, you also will have an opportunity, students, and my message here, I hope you hear, is there will be students coming from five NEC middle schools into all of these high schools, so it's an opportunity to branch out and make new friends and find friends that have similar interests to you. So please, I encourage you to keep an open mind as you explore the high schools. You need to find the right fit for you and not necessarily your best friend. They all also have unique partnerships with local businesses and colleges, which the coordinators will clearly spell out for you. Each NEC also has a signature program, and this is where our differences begin. So I wanna set the stage. So what is a signature program? Well, it's an instructional program developed around a central theme, and that theme permeates the building and its curriculum. The signatures are based usually on a career theme and are intended to engage students and make student coursework relevant to future careers and interests. As part of the signatures, the high schools might have specialty coursework in that thematic area and offer special opportunities such as extracurriculars, field trips, guest speakers, and partnerships with local businesses and agencies. In addition, their buildings are often designed to reflect their signature. For example, here at Blake, they have a black box theater, which is reflective of their signature in the fine arts. Students may also complete a capstone experience, which is a typically a culminating activity that embraces the portion of the signature that they have participated in. Usually this can take the form of an independent study activity, or it could be an internship, or even a college, college course. For example, Paint Branch has a science theme as part of their signature, and because of this, some Paint Branch students actually have an opportunity to intern at Holy Cross. In addition, there's a technology theme at Springbrook, and they have actually had a few students in the past intern at the National Security Agency. In a moment, the coordinators will share information about their specific signatures, but I first wanted to give you a frame of reference by sharing a brief description of what the signature program is. So let's segue into talking about the timeline. So October is a really busy month for eighth graders in the Northeast Consortium. You're here this evening to get an overview of the programs, but this is also the beginning of open house season. So an open house is an opportunity to visit each NEC high school and meet their staff, students, and parents and receive more detailed information about their programs. So the first one begins on the 16th at Blake, and then on the 23rd is Paint Branch, and on the 29th is Springbrook. And I encourage you to go to as many of these as you possibly can. I went last year to one of our NEC um, open houses and I, heard a family walking out saying, wow, I'm really glad I came. This was not a school I was considering, but it feels right to me for you. So it's really an opportunity for you to get a feel for the school. The other thing that happens in October is choice form instructions will be mailed out to students who are enrolled at MCPS and who reside in the Northeast Consortium. And that's gonna happen sometime towards the end of next week. We'll give you instructions on how to fill out your choice form and how to access the form. And we send that to the address you have on file at the school in their database. So please, if you've moved recently, make sure you've updated that address so you get our mailing. The other thing that happens in October is grade eight students have hear from their counselor at their NEC middle school and they hear about the NEC high schools from their counselors. I provide the counselors with a lesson to go into the classrooms to talk to their students, and they provide them with a booklet called the Signatures Booklet. So that should be coming home with students in the next couple of weeks as another source of information for you. Raise your hand for me if we have any families out there that attend a private school. Excellent. I'm glad that you heard about our meeting and that you are here. You are also eligible, once you prove your residency, to participate in round one of the choice process, and choice forms are due on November 1st. 
So for those of you at a private school, you're going to want to contact our office and our phone number is on that yellow summary sheet to make an appointment to come in and to pre-register. So you have to show some residency documents and other documents and they'll get you a choice form and you will be able to participate at the same time as our public school students. We actually have evening hours set aside on October the 30th from 4 to 7, so that if you are working and you need evening hours, that's the night we set aside for you to come in. But you're going to want to contact our office and we'll get you registered and let you know what you need to do to participate. And then on November 1st, Friday, it is the due date for all NEC residing students to get that choice form in. And we do expect 100% uh, participation. Some of our NEC middle schools too, they have over 300 students. So families that are in here, sometimes counselors will ask you to get them in a little before the first because they have to follow up with any student that doesn't turn them in. And that's quite a large task. So please try to get those filled out before the due date. And then in January, you will get a letter in the mail stating what the results of the lottery were and what your high school assignment is. So that's a little bit about the timeline. Now I want to tell you a little bit about what the choice form will look like. So students, you're going to get instructions in the mail with your parents. You're going to sit down and you're going to log on to your school Google account. You must be logged into the school Google account. You're going to type in a bit.ly link, which is just a very short um, IP address, and we'll give you that address on your instructions letter, and your NEC grade 8 counselor also has that um, link as well. And when you type in the link to the form, it'll pop up and you'll see the three choices there. You're going to rank them first, check, second, and third, and then the parent needs to put in their email address because we will give you a receipt of what the choices were that were submitted. So you will get in your email inbox what was submitted so you have it for your records. If you have any difficulty with the form, please don't hesitate to either contact your NEC grade 8 counselor or call our office and we will be there to assist. So now what I'd like to do is I want to turn it over to our NEC high school coordinators and we're going to first start with Blake High School and I would like to welcome Ms. Katya Jimenez from Blake High School. Good evening. Um, my name is Katya Jimenez, and I'm not the signature coordinator. <laughs> I'm standing in for Ms. Elizabeth Cooper tonight, who is our signature coordinator, but she's on maternity leave. I am the resource teacher, which if you have not heard that term yet, it's basically someone who oversees departments. I oversee music um, and arts, also theater sometimes. <laughs> um, for us, I'm, I'm really excited that you're here tonight in this building because this building is actually built for the arts and humanities, which is our signature. This is a little bit of an overview for you right now, what um, our signatures are. Um, we have them in arts and then many uh, different pathways. And if you gotten around, well, you don't see much tonight, so you have to come back for the open house. Um, but you're sitting in the auditorium, which is our performing arts center, more or less. And if you would look behind, you would then go into our music wings, which are connected, which is kind of nice because they're close to the stage as well and can support the theater. So as you see, we, can, we are kind of connected. We also have the visual arts wing, which is built with different studios as well as a digital studio and a fashion studio. And then we, um, have a little bit of, um, we have several dance studios, and as we mentioned beforehand, we have a little black box for you. So um, many classes, many, many electives on the art side, but also we have them on the humanity side. Um, we have literature, we have the career paths, we have AP capstones. Um, we have the business side, and we have uh, the STEM side. So each of these um, opportunities that these students have here at Blake come also, as we just heard, with 
real world connections as we like to call them. Um, I personally teach fashion, so I live and breathe actually the programs. Um, and as that, I take my students to New York. We went to the White House. Um, we have students that are connected um, to our NIH program, which is in the STEM signature, and our speaker tonight will tell you a little bit more about that. She can tell that better than I do. Um, but we have different internships, we have different clubs, we visit different places, we have connections to Stratmore. Um, music travels to Disney, as many others do as well, but we also travel to Nashville or the Sugar Bowl. So our programs connect you to the outside and um, therefore we're very proud to have you know, a comprehensive program in the arts and the humanities. So tonight, I could tell you more, just because my passion has been in this building for the past 10 years, more than 10 years, and I actually student taught here a minute ago, um, and came back because that's my love in this building. But these two are available for you tonight much better. Down here we have Brianna. She'll be at the table for outside, and um, she's also um, in the STEM part of our signature program. And up now, i like to introduce Hasset to you. She um, comes from Banneker to us, and her passion is in the STEM field, and she did participate in the NIH program, which she's very passionate about, and she would like to tell you about it now. So please welcome Hasset to tell you a little bit more about Blake. Uh, hi, my name is Hase Norling. I'm a senior in Blake High School. And uh, coming into my freshman year, I didn't know what I wanted to do uh, career-wise. So I took a lot of classes. I took classes in uh, music. I took classes in the humanities. I took a lot of government classes. And I took, I thought my passion was politics for a long time. And then it wasn't until I took AP Biology in, during, my f f during my junior year that I realized that medicine was my passion. I had Mistake as my teacher. She's a wonderful teacher. We have wonderful teachers in Blake High School. And she taught me uh, a lot, and she inspired me to uh, follow the medical career path. And uh, she introduced me to the internship in NIH. So during my junior year, I, we had connections to NIH. So during my junior year, I got to go on tours uh, of the NIH, just a huge in institute with uh, different uh, research departments. So uh, we went once a month uh, to NIH and toured um, the nursing department and the vaccine department and the National Institute of um, Library Medicine. And um, I really loved it at NIH. So they had a high step uh, program. It's the high school uh, scientific and training um, program. And we, and I had an opportunity to and, uh, apply, and it was a really high, highly selective program. But since I had a connection to NIH already from Blake, I was able to have, um, uh, I, I was able to right on my application that I went to the discovery program and that uh, I really enjoyed it and I wanted to be part of the summer program. And it was a seven week summer program and I got accepted. I had an opportunity to conduct experiments with NIH scientists and uh, network with scientists and then get a college and career advising as well. And then they still communicate with me and they encourage me to apply to the internship for next year, for after my senior year, after I finished my senior year. And it was this uh, lifelong connection for my career that really benefited me highly. And I couldn't have done it if it wasn't for the program here at Blake. And I am interested in uh, pursuing a degree in biology and minoring in psychology and uh, following a pre-med uh, career path so I can become a physician and in the future. Thank you. There you go. 
Good evening. <clears throat> My name is Eric Gerber. I'm the Dean of Students over at Paint Branch High School. Uh, currently, I'm also overseeing the Signature uh, Program. I also oversee the AP Program, as well as run the data for uh, Paint Branch High School. Uh, this past year, my oldest son is entering ninth grade, so I, last year I sat in the same seats as you did in a different county, and what I wanted to hear when I went to these things is, how does my kid fit in? Right? Just by standing outside uh, at the beginning of the night, everyone has a unique, a unique situation, everybody has a unique child. Okay? At Paint Branch, right now we're the Academy of uh, Media and Science, but we're actually an academy or a, a signature program throughout the whole school, right? And the reason why I say that, <clears throat> excuse me, is because uh, our school is growing, and our school is growing uh, in the interests of what our students are looking for, right? Uh, our students that will be speaking tonight, I have Veronica who will be speaking on uh, behalf of the Academy of Medical and Careers. Right. We also have Aiden, who will also be assisting with that. I have Craig, who is the uh, Academy of Media. I have Jekyllia and Floor, who, who are talking about the Culinary Arts Institute that we have at Paint Branch. But we also have uh, an ROTC, so on um, the 23rd of this month, when you come to the open house, you'll see that there's a number of programs, but we're only allowed to bring you know, two to four students, okay? Uh, so the best way to, uh, to see what Paint Branch has to offer is speaking directly with the students and seeing the programs on the 23rd uh, in itself. Right? We are a newer school. Right? Our school was uh, built in 2012. Uh, it's only seven years old, but each year new things are being built within the school uh, and money is devoted from the county uh, to the programs that we're running. Right? Our Academy of uh, Health Professions, uh, one of our classrooms is actually a, um, uh, is a hospital bed right? in a hospital room. Uh, so we have that stuff that is brought in uh, with our restaurant management. We have a full working restaurant quality, industrial uh, quality kitchen that's running, right? Paint Branch, uh, the way we look at it, is relatively unique in regards to what track your, your uh, son or daughter can go to, right? A lot of our academies, some of our students start off in one academy and move on over to another academy because just like uh, a freshman in college, we have a number of students that come in in eighth grade that could, saying in ninth grade, I'm going to be a chemical engineer. Well, that's great, but then they're introduced to all these different classes and by the time they leave high school in itself, well, maybe I'm gonna go into law. Then they go on to college, I'm gonna to go to law school. And then by the time they're finished with their four year of college, they're introduced to new classes, new ideas, and new expressions uh, so that we're shaping the mind. And so that's why uh, when we're talking about Paint Branch, we look at it as special signatures and a number of academy programs. Right? We have uh, also a Japanese foreign language. We have an AVID program. We have ROTC, uh, that it, a number of our programs that we have. Right? One of the last things, that we can talk about for Paint Branch in itself, and these are all the items, uh, is to hear it directly from our students in itself. Right? So what I'd like to do is hand it right over to Veronica Tassi, who is going to tell, her, tell you about our experiences and her experiences that uh, she can share with us from Paint Branch High School. Thank you. Hello, my name is Veronica, and to start off, I'd just like to say that I have been in love with medicine since I was a little girl, so once I found out that Paint Branch had a medical program, I was sold. So I've attended the medical science program, program starting my freshman year through my senior year. I started this journey with Foundations of Medicines, and we learned medical terminology, explored different types of medical fields, and we dissected a goat's brain, which was pretty cool if you ask me. Then I continued my journey by taking structures of foundations. In this class, we dug deep into the cells and tissues of how the body was created and how they work together in unison. Then my last year, last year, 
I attended the medical science with applications. And in that year, so the first semester, we stayed in class and we learned the skills and necessities that we needed before we went to the hospital the second semester. And we're partnered with Holy Cross Hospital, so we work with real patients at the real hospital. And it was the greatest experience I probably had in my life, seeing how nurses and doctors work in the real field. And I've witnessed um, an open heart surgery, not something your average high school student sees, I'm guessing, I'm pretty sure. And I've also seen different types of surgeries. I've seen phlebotomists do their jobs. I've seen the laboratory people cut up body parts and put it under a microscope. It's just a really cool experience that I think every student should experience if you're interested in the medical field. And my favorite experience was the heart surgery, like I mentioned. And my favorite course was the medical science with applications because I got to actually work with patients, not behind a closed door, not watching a video, but actually hold hands with the patients and assist them and comfort them in ways that real nurses do. And my future plans is to become an OBGYN, PA. I want to help women deliver their babies and carry on to term and whatnot. And Paint Branch helps me do that. So that's why I chose PB, PB way. Thank you. Hi, everybody. How are you? Uh, my name is John Weinshell. Um, I'm the signature coordinator over at Springbrook High School. Springbrook High School? OK. <laughs> um, I'm also one of the two IB coordinators. We have two IB programs. Um, at Springbrook. I have two pieces of good news for you. Um, the first piece of good news is you cannot make a bad decision. All three schools are fantastic, okay? So I urge all of you to come to all three open houses, walk around, check out the programs, because ultimately, here's what your goal should be. Your goal should be that your child is happy going to high school, okay? And if you make that your goal, again, there's no wrong choices, okay? Uh, the second piece of good news is uh, I am the last speaker uh, of the three high schools, and I know it's warm in here, um, so let me get to it. Um, we are the IB World and Information Technology School, okay? Um, these are our two goals, right? Developing intellectual, personal, emotional health exposing kids to all curricular areas and give them a rigorous liberal arts education. Um, we also want them to access cutting edge technology to develop those 21st century skills. So our first big program is our IB Middle Years program and IB Diploma program, okay? Um, Every kid that comes to Springbrook in ninth grade is an international baccalaureate student. They use the MCPS curriculum, but it's under a framework devised by the international baccalaureate. The international baccalaureate really emphasizes process as opposed to just content. Now, in 10th grade, students can decide whether or not they want to continue their IB education by becoming either a full IB diploma student, in which case you take six courses over two years and test in all six. Again, these are internationally recognized courses. So um, students are no longer using the state of Maryland curriculum. They're using an international curriculum. So um, we have students taking uh, IB biology the IB biology class they're taking is the exact same class that students taking IB bio uh, in Japan, in Saudi Arabia, in South Africa, in China. It's the exact same uh, course, the exact same exam taken, and those exams go off to Geneva to be scored, okay? We also have the Academy of Information Technology. A lot of these programs are four course programs. Our Academy of Information Technology has three strands. So if your child is interested in computer programming, then Springbrook's a great choice for you. If your child is interested in land management and networks and, and devising networks, that's a second strand in the Academy of Information Technology. And then we also have a web design strand. 
In addition, Justice Law and Society. It's a great program if your kid is interested in those areas. Our kids do internships with the ACLU, internships with the Public Defender's Office. We have a legal partnership with Verizon. Um, they've gone to the uh, Supreme Court and met with um, Justice uh, Sotomayor. Um, so really cool experiences. You're gonna get really cool experiences at all the schools, okay? Um, we also started this year at Project Lead the Way, it's the Academy of Engineering. Uh, many of your students might have already taken the first course um, in eighth grade, and if they wanna continue Project Lead the Way, we offer that program and we're building it each year. Um, our hospitality management program is a culinary-based program using the ProStock curriculum. Um, it's all been renovated with stainless steel countertops. Um, and we also offer, as all three schools, do a child development program and we run our own preschool. So really there's something for everybody. But in addition, we have all the things that all the other schools have, right? We have a thriving theater department, a thriving music department, um, and a thriving art department where we've just started a arts intensive pathway that will lead to portfolio work either at the AP level and the IB level. And we also offer all AP classes also. Here are some of the special opportunities our kids have. Internships at NSA, internships at the Applied Physics Lab, internships uh, at Verizon. Um, we go on service trips um, as part of the International Baccalaureate. Right, Ms. Durr? Preston loved it, right? Um, so again, I urge everyone to come to our open houses. Um, ours is the 29th, I think ours is the last one, but come to Blake and also come here. Um, finally, I wanna just introduce you to a fabulous young lady, Hazel Lewis. Um, I have three kids here. Hazel will talk to you. Simon Debesai is right over here. He's an IB student. Hazel does IB and the Academy of Information Technology. And I also have Adriana Rodriguez who currently is um, working um, a Spanish-speaking only program, okay? Uh, so without further ado, I'm gonna have Hazel talk to you a little bit about Springbrook. Uh, good evening, my name is Hazel Lewis and I am a senior at Springbrook High School. I attended Benjamin Banneker Middle School and almost all the students, including the majority of my friends, which had been with me since elementary school, went to Paint Branch, actually. But I wanted to pick a school not just because my friends were going, but because it would further my academic career. So I, because Banneker had fell into the Northeast Consortium, um, I got to choose between Paint Branch, Blake, or Springbrook. So I went to the information nights, the open houses at each one of the schools, but Springbrook stood out the most to me because they offered programs like the International Baccalaureate or the AOIT program, and it really appealed to me, and they were programs that the other schools did not offer. So I, when I went to the open house actually in eighth grade, I felt at home being in a school that I actually just stepped foot inside and I'm happy to say that I have not regretted my decision. So at Springbrook, I'm involved in many clubs and extracurriculars such as the National Honor Society, Student Ambassadors, Springbrook Women in Technology, Restorative Justice, and I'm also on the varsity basketball team. And like I mentioned before, I'm also enrolled in the Academy of Information Technology. Um, however, the program that I actually want to emphasize the most today is um, the International Baccalaureate Program or the IB Program. So going into Springbrook, I was aware that they offered the program, but it was the encouragement from my parents and staff members at Springbrook that influenced my decision to enroll in the IB program. So as of right now, I'm a full IB diploma candidate, which means I have taken or am taking the courses necessary for me to receive my IB diploma. In 11th grade, I took IB theory of knowledge, history, biology, English, and Spanish. This year, I take the second year of theory of knowledge, history, biology, and English, in addition to IB computer science, math, and psychology. My favorite part of the IB program is the community of like-minded people that I am now a part of. My fellow IB peers and I take all the same classes, which causes us to form strong bonds with each other, and these bonds help me get through the rigor of the program. 
Also due to the rigor of the program, I have formed solid study groups with my peers, which has helped us getting good grades on assignments and tests. My peers challenge me and help me to strive for greatness, which in the end helps me to become successful in every class. After high school, I, have planned, I plan on attending a four-year college. My top three colleges are Northeastern University, Pennsylvania State University, and University of Maryland. In college, I plan to major in cybersecurity or information technology. Although the IB program didn't directly influence my choice in major, my participation in the Academy of Information Technology did. Um, so to go back to IB, it's definitely preparing me for the fast-paced and rigorous environment of college. The program's take on knowledge is not just about memorizing facts, but it's also to be an active and in-depth learner. The IB program and the teachers behind it have taught me to be balanced, principled, knowledgeable, caring, open-minded, reflective, and also to be a risk taker. I will carry these qualities not only to, with me to college, but for the rest of my adult and professional life. So I urge every parent sitting here today to sit down with your child and talk to them about what they're interested in and then help them find the programs in their school that match those interests so they can have the best possible experience in high school. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to find me and ask. I'd be happy to help. Thank you. Thank you. I always hate to follow the students because they do such an amazing job at such a young age. There's no way I could have gotten up here at their age and done this. So can we give them just one more round of applause? Thank you, students, all of you. Well done. So we're going to take about the next 10 minutes to talk a little bit about the lottery and how it's run and what factors are involved in the lottery. And then we're going to dismiss you back out to the table fair. So about a week after we have 100% of the choice forms submitted, we take that data and we run it through a computerized lottery. So one of the things that's considered in the lottery is base high school. Base High School will be indicated on your choice form submission letter that's mailed to you towards the end of last or end of next week, but basically it's going to be determined by your home address. If you are unsure of your base, you can type your address into the assignment locator tool on Montgomery County Public Schools website to find your base, okay? And that website is on your summary sheet if you were interested in doing that. So what's important for you to remember about your base high school is if you place your base high school as your first choice, it is guaranteed that you will be assigned there, okay? If you place it as your second choice and your first choice school isn't available, then you would get it as a second choice, the base, okay? So base high school, if you put it as first, you're definitely going to be assigned there. You don't even need to wait for your assignment letter to come, it's guaranteed. If for some reason, however, your first choice is unavailable, it's enrolled to capacity, and you put your base as your second choice, it's kind of a safety spot. You'll get that. So that's a little bit about your base. I want you to know that you may not change your choices after you submit your choices into the round one lottery, though. So I want you to consider your base high school um, as you fill out those choice forms, okay? And about a little over 40% of students do choose outside their base. So what other variables impact school assignments? Well, school capacity. How many students can the ninth grade hold at our high schools? And that's determined at the county level. And then we look at how students ranked, ranked their choices, how many students selected their base, how many students have what we call sibling link, which I'll define in a moment. And it also considers socioeconomic status, which we use a free and reduced meals number and gender. So let me get a little bit more specific. First of all, sibling link. Do you have a brother or a sister residing in the same household who will attend that same high school next year? They can't have graduated because there's no sibling link once that's done. That sibling link's broken if they're graduating. But if they're gonna be there next year, then you have a sibling link. They also need to be assigned to that school through the comprehensive program. Okay, not through an application program, but through the lottery choice process. So I wanna give you a little graphic. So how does the assignment process work? 
So let's just pretend, and this is a random number, that there are 400 seats available here at Blake. Let's say that you have 200 students that have a base of Blake, and they put it down as their first choice. So those first 200 seats at Blake are filled by those base students. So we still have 200 seats left. Let's say that we have 50 students who put Blake as their first choice, and they have a brother or sister that's going to be here next year. Those next 50 seats are filled by students that have a sibling link. So that's 250 students or seats taken. So the next 150 seats go into a computerized lottery, and they try to maximize the first choice rate, and they try to make sure that all three schools are balanced for gender and for the farms rate, free and reduced meals. So they try to balance those lotteries. So that's a little bit about how the lottery works. I do want you to know that last year in the NEC, approximately 82% of students received their first choice after round one. So we often get the question, will transportation be provided to all three NEC high schools? Well, the answer to that question is if you reside in the NEC, and you live outside that two-mile boundary or two-mile walking distance as set by the county, then yes, you will get transportation. However, I urge you all, if you get on MCPS's website and type in bus routes by school, you can look at the existing bus routes that exist now. I know for me, I have a 13-year-old. He likes to sleep. It's painful to get him up in the morning. So if I was looking at schools, I really would have to consider how much earlier he might have to get up to get across to a school that's further away. For some of you, you guys have energetic children that get right up. That's not a consideration. But I do urge you to take a look at transportation and make sure it works within your family structure in the morning. So how do students who live in the NEC but attend a DCC middle school participate in the choice process? Can you raise your hand for me if, if we have any students that attend a DCC middle school? Okay, excellent. I have a few of you. So you're going to, because you reside in the NEC, you're going to fill out an NEC high school choice form and submit it by November 1st. And you're going to get an assignment in the mail in January stating what your NEC high school assignment is. However, in February, you will also have the opportunity to participate in something we call round two. And this is only for students that reside in the NEC, but attend a DCC middle school because maybe they're in a special magnet or immersion program. So during round two, the, that group of students will be able to submit a DCC high school choice lottery form. And you'll find out in March the results of the DCC lottery. So you'll have an NEC assignment and a DCC assignment come March, and you'll just tell our office, you'll fill out what's called a notice of intent of which assignment you want to accept, okay? DCC attending students are also eligible to apply to a couple of programs um, in the DCC, uh, Wheaton's Biomedical and Engineering Program, Kennedy's Leadership Training Institute, and Blair's CAP Program. Because you attend a DCC middle school, you are also eligible to apply to those. And those applications are also due on November 1st, but they'll expand on that at the 8 p.m. session a little bit as far as the application process goes. So that's how students who attend DCC middle schools participate. So what happens after round one? Well, I mentioned briefly, we have something called round two. And the deadline is actually this year on Valentine's Day, so an easy date for most of us to remember. And there's really three groups of students that can participate in what we call round two. I mentioned one of them already, those students that go to DCC middle schools but live in the NEC, you can submit a DCC choice form during round two. The other group that can participate, if you are an NEC residing student, you go to an NEC middle school or a private school and you've participated in round one and you didn't get your first choice, you are able to resubmit your original choices into the round two lottery. The reason that sometimes the lottery um, results are different is because the other thing that's happening in February 
is notifications are being sent to students who possibly apply to application only and magnet programs. So if you have a student that was assigned to Springbrook, but then maybe they got into the math science magnet at Blair and they accept that seat, that opens up a seat at Springbrook, or it opens up a seat at Paint Branch, or it opens up a seat at Blair, I mean Blake, sorry. So that's happening. So that's why if you don't get your first choice, just know that you will be able to resubmit your original choices, you can't change them, into what we call the round two lottery. And we'll spell that all out for you when we send you an assignment letter in January. The other group of students that participates in round two is students that move into the Northeast Consortium after the round one deadline. So if you move in December, January into the NEC, you'd be able to participate in round two. So round two high school assignment letters come out in March, uh, mid to late March. Um, the other thing that happens in April is it's appeal season. So if you feel that you didn't get your first choice and you have a unique hardship that you can document that, that makes it so that there's compelling reason to over-enroll a school, you can write an appeal letter and submit your documentation. Okay, but that will also be spelled out in our assignment letters in March. I also wanted to mention that there's a process that is in place in the NEC. It's called high school change of choice. So if your child starts ninth grade and is unhappy at his school or her school, there is a process in place called change of choice. So they can request in January of their ninth grade year to go to a different high school in 10th grade. Okay. It's not a guarantee unless you're requesting your base, but there is a process that they could go to a different high school the following year or they could request it without having a hardship. Again, the only guaranteed assignment would be base high school, but know that that exists. I will tell you that we have very few students participate in change of choice. Once they get to their high school, they're fairly happy. And those, again, will be due in February. So just wanted to mention and finish up to let you know that there are several application programs for students who have a special interest or strength in a particular area of study. And I just want to mention them for you. If you're interested, you can stay for the 8 o'clock presentation because they'll give you more details. But they are, and this is new, the Regional International Baccalaureate Program at Springbrook. It's going to be an application program, OK? and they'll travel as a cohort uh, in the ninth grade. The countywide international baccalaureate program at Richard Montgomery, the science math computer science magnet at Blair, the Montgomery College middle college program at Northwood, the global ecology house at Poolsville, and the Wheaton Edison partnership, and the IB career related, related programs at Rockville. So if you think you wanna learn more about those application programs, I would stay, come back here at about 8 o'clock to hear a presentation on those. I've tried to capture the highlights of this evening's presentation on your summary sheet. I will also post this PowerPoint to our website um, so you can use it as a reference. I would appreciate if you filled out your surveys because we really do look at those when planning the next year's event. And lastly, I just want to finish up by um, recognizing and thanking Mr. Robert Sinclair and the staff here at Blake for accommodating us for our event. So at this time, if you want to head out to the hallways, the coordinators and their students are available to answer questions. And I will also be out at the tables uh, milling around. So please feel free. If I didn't cover something that you would like to know, I'm happy to answer any questions you have. Thank you for coming. Okay. I couldn't get it. Started. Just a reminder that at 8 o'clock, the application portion of the program will begin. So, this is it. But you have to find the mouse. Yeah, I would find Tina. I could, where would I look for her? She said she, she would be, be here. Down here. Because I told her I couldn't pull it up, so she knows to come back. Okay.
So if I didn't have to ask questions of today, course. Like, I don't know why it's still showing that. Sabrina, I will make okay. sure I'm back here at 8 in case she doesn't. Okay. I'm sorry, I guess we're not starting till eight, but okay. right, well, it makes me happy for you to be here. <laughs> Great. I, I'm right after you, Sabrina. I okay. just oh, yeah. lost the batteries. There's another. Hopefully there's just two. Okay. And so... Okay. Is this the right, the right uh, one? We have 39 seniors. Yes. Seniors. So we have next traditional high yes. school. Yes. But I just need the, you know. Yep. Okay. For sure. You know, we were up, our numbers were way up two years ago, and now we're back to, okay. I can see it all. Will it bother you guys if I, I'm sorry to interrupt, if I leave my notebook? Up there when you speak, you can just lay your stuff on top. Okay. I'm not in my hand. I hear you. All right. Additional high school options Is coming correct? up next. Additional high school options for students in the NEC. Slide, just to make sure we're in the right place here. Yes, ma'am. All right. Very good. Perfect. Here's Thank you so much. At your microphone. Okay. Just and it's here. on, right? Um, I don't know if it's on or not. Here at Blake, we do things a little different. Yeah, you're on. So if you're ever doubting if you're on, this button should be up at the top, which it is already. Oh. So you're on. Okay. And I'll leave it that way for you. Thank you. But if you're ever doubting, okay. just make sure that guy's up top. And then well, really talk. No one will mess with it. Yeah, nobody should mess with it. Talk. And then just talk right into that microphone. Springbrook. So you want to be as close to that as you're comfortable. Obviously, don't go into the podium. Okay. As close as you're comfortable. Okay. And then you're good to go. All right. Okay. Thank you. And you are? I'm the lawyer. Live and up in touch. Oh, yeah, let me get out to you. Well, you're not in order, you know that. I know. It's fine, we got it, we know. We're okay, we got this. She keeps saying, don't worry, She thinks that I'm worried. I don't know. I don't know. I will be fine. Yeah, she thinks I'm fine. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what you mean. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I Just renovated. 
expanded the cafeteria, and and they put a media center on it, and everything else is 1956. Well, you know, so I spent all many of years in that building. I lived there when Sherwood. Rockville was there. No, I right. Rockville. I spent two, two stints with Sherwood. Then when I left and went to BCC, I spent two stints with BCC. Right. And I spent a lot of years at Northwood, just and not with Northwood. Right. So you see, it's the, the whole core is what yeah. it was when you were there. Oh, okay. Yeah, so, that was... Well, because except all the ceilings are lower. Were you ever there with the BCC or not? Or did you come to BCC when it was in the new building? It was always in the new building. No, because we were in Northwood, and then the new building wasn't ready, so we had to stay. We moved in January. That was nice. Yeah. We were at Northwood first semester, yes, and then they parents. gave us a couple. They gave us a little bit longer, and we were all the close to kids that need that extra ring, that baby, they want to do school, 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 school all the time. They want the kids, they want the baby, but they don't want that extra ring. Coordinator's toolkit is coming. 
I'm going to go ahead and get started when it's 8 o'clock, if people are here or not. So, yeah. Okay, good evening and welcome. I know it's been a long evening for many of you, me too. And I appreciate you hanging on and coming to this portion of the presentations. I'm Sabrina Jones, I'm an instructional specialist with the Division of Consortia Choice and Application Programs. And I uh, want you to know that this pro presentation is specifically designed for parents and students in the NEC, but if you are not a family from the NEC, you will still find a good deal of information available. And if you have additional questions, when this is over, I'll be outside to answer them. There will be information for the other schools as well. We're gonna go ahead and get started. This evening, we're going to talk about countywide and regional application programs. We're going to talk about the admission process. I'll go over a few frequently asked questions and review the timeline. When this is over, you'll have a short amount of time to go back out to the table fair and get some additional questions answered. Before we move forward, I want to draw your attention to your handouts. You've already been through the first three. The fourth handout is a listing of programs that are available to students in your school area. If you're not in the NEC, hopefully you were given a different color sheet. Um, and if you didn't get that, you could stop and get one on your way out. Um, Next is a pink sheet. On one side, it talks about the application process. On the other side, it's a listing of the various information meetings. I'm gonna to refer to these throughout the night, so I thought it'd be good for you to just know what they are. We have a capture sheet where if you choose, you may take some notes. And we have a booklet that we call the At A Glance, and it lists all of the countywide and all of the regional programs, some of which you may not be eligible for because eligibility is based upon your address and the middle school you attend. But if you want to know which of these programs you are eligible to participate in, then that's where you would use your green sheet. Um, finally, there's a flyer from our public information office. It's about career readiness. Please remember that the programs I'm going to talk about this evening are optional. So you heard a whole lot about the choice process. That's mandatory. You're going to have to make a choice and you're going to have to rank your schools. Everything I'm going to talk about now is all optional. So please note the two processes are separate. So you have one form that you fill out for choice and you have an application that you fill out for these programs. The choice form is mandatory. The application programs are optional. And I know it's a little funny to say that choice is mandatory, but that's the way it is. So let's talk a little bit about the countywide application programs. There are four. 
There's one at the Blair High School. It's math, science, computer science. And then there's another at Poolsville High School, global ecology. There's the International Baccalaureate Program at Richard Montgomery. And there's the Visual Arts Center at Einstein. Now, I will tell you in advance, some of these slides are going to be full of information. And that's in part because even though I'm talking to you about this, these slides will be available online. And there are people who aren't here. And that way, they can access some of the information as well. Um, and it also gives you an opportunity if you don't capture everything this evening to go back online and get your questions answered. The next three slides I'm going to show will provide more detailed information about the countywide magnets. I won't talk about the VAC because that presentation was given earlier today at 6.30. And um, I'll, like I said, I'll just be doing an, an overview, highlighting a few things because each of these programs, they have a more in-depth meeting that you'll be invited to attend. Again, I want to bring your attention to the at a glance if you need a little more detail. So start with the program at Blair High School. This program is for students who have an interest in math, science, and or computer science. These are students who may be interested in an academic group that will attend Blair for all four years, that will take courses in the three magnet areas all four years, that will work at an accelerated pace, and who are currently in a math of algebra or higher. The Global Ecology House is similar to Blair in structure. Uh, students who have an interest in environment, sustainability, or science may be interested in joining the academic group here. Again, this is a four-year program. It will be held at Poolsville. You will take the three magnet area courses all four years. You will work at an accelerated pace. And you will need to be in algebra or higher at this time. I do recommend visiting the informational meeting at Poolsville, if for no other reason, Poolsville is a little bit far away, and you might want to gauge how long a distance it is from where you live. And I'm going to touch briefly on the countywide international baccalaureate program, because you're going to hear a little bit more in depth about it when we talk about the regional IB and the um, also, the IBCP programs, you'll hear a little bit more about those. So I'm just going to share with you that IB stands for International Baccalaureate. And it is an internationally recognized program from which students can earn a diploma that is recognized globally. Entrance into the program at Richard Montgomery does require algebra or higher. And a student needs to be prepared for level two of Spanish, French, or Chinese. And I say ready for level two because there are some students who may be fluent in one of those languages, and therefore, maybe they wouldn't have a Chinese one credit, per se, but they would be comfortable entering into at least level two of the language. We are excited this year because there are some brand new programs that are going to be available to students in this area. And there are some that are very new, even though they've been around maybe one or two years. Um, the first is the Middle College at Montgomery College. And uh, Mr. Sauter is going to talk with us a little bit about that. And the second I have listed there is the Wheaton Edison Partnership. If you were here when Mr. Krasa was speaking, he's the principal at Edison, and he talked about the partnership where students can start from as early as ninth grade, uh, participating in a career readiness program. And the regional IB, as I said, uh, Ms. Trivers is here. She's going to talk about that in a little bit. And our IB career-related program at Rockville High School. And Ms. Ainsworth will be talking to you about that. I just want to mention that the Wheaton Edison Partnership is a four-year program. I know that part of the presentation Mr. Krasak gave, he talked about 
this and also a part-time program. So both programs are going to be going on at Edison simultaneously. Um, it is available for students in our area. There are about 100 to 125 seats. And Mr. Krasel will be available to talk to you about construction management and architecture, healthcare professions, hospitality and tourism management, and information technology cybersecurity. The other big new deal this year is the expansion of International Baccalaureate. For many years, the county had only the countywide program at Richard Montgomery and programs at, I think we have a total of eight schools that have the IB program, but those programs started in the 11th grade. So what's different about the Richard Montgomery program is students come there as a part of an academic group in ninth grade, and that's the program that's going to be duplicated at a number of different sites, Kennedy, Springbrook, Watkins Mill, and for the Northeast Consortium, it will be Springbrook. I'm going to introduce Ms. Trivers now, Amanda Trivers from Springbrook High School. She can talk to you a little bit more about regional IB at Springbrook. Hey, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedules to come out and um, find out about your options for next year. Um, I just wanted to talk a little bit about the new regional site, uh, the IB regional site at Springbrook. So we've had an IB program at Springbrook, both at the middle years level and in the diploma program level um, for a number of years. But now this new idea where students will enter in ninth grade and really start as ninth graders and build their skills and solidify their foundation so that by the time they get to 11th grade, they are well prepared for the IB diploma program. Um, if you're not familiar with it, the International Baccalaureate Program offers a very academically rigorous program for students in 11th and 12th grade um, who are internationally minded, who are motivated, who are looking for a challenge, and who are interested in service opportunities. So if that sounds like you, it might be something that you're considering for next year. Um, as I mentioned before, Springbrook already has a ninth and 10th grade IB middle years program. So if you come to Springbrook, you will automatically be part of our IB program. Um, but if you go through this application pro, uh, process, you can be part of that ninth and 10th grade um, academic peer grouping, which um, those students will travel into certain courses together. So um, that's what we're looking at, st at starting for next year. Um, as I mentioned, I feel like we're very, very fortunate. We're one of only eight schools in the county that can offer this IB program, which gives students a chance to study a number of, in an, uh, a number of different IB areas. So as you can see up here, uh, Springbrook offers courses in English language and literature. We offer several different options for world language. Um, we have some social studies classes. We have several science and um, computer science courses at the IB level, as well as math, and quite a few arts courses, such as dance, film, music, and visual arts. So if these sound like courses that you might be interested in, I would encourage you to go on and apply for the IB regional site program. Um, many students or, and parents ask me why I would recommend the IB program for students, and it just so happens my own students are in the elementary level of the IB program, and I'm so impressed with the philosophy behind IB and the things that they're learning already in kindergarten and second grade. So it really is a great program. It teaches students lessons like critical thinking and open-mindedness. Um, there are learner profile traits that students are really encouraged to become good inquirers and great communicators, risk takers. So there are a lot of benefits for students in this program. Um, as you know, you have quite a few options, and I wish you luck in making your decision. But if you want more information about the IB Regional Site at Springbrook, please think about attending our open house. It's on October 29th, so I hope you can come out and ask more questions there. Um, thank you so much, and at this time, I'd like to introduce um, Mike Souter from Northwood. Do I press? Got you. 
All right, hello everybody. My name is Mike Sauter and I'm the coordinator of the Middle College Program at Northwood High School. It's Montgomery College Middle College Program, thus MC squared. Uh, we have had two uh, graduating classes so far. Uh, our first cohort, we had five students graduate um, in 2018. These are students who get an associate's degree before they get a high school diploma. And our first group of students, all of them are Terrapins. Uh, they, when they came to us, it uh, was their intent from the start to go to the University of Maryland, and we have uh, two pre-med, one computer science, one nursing, and one uh, biochemistry uh, student there from that first group. Our, our second group of 12 graduates uh, last year had a much more broad array of interests, and we've got business majors, we've got psych, we've got uh, some STEM, some uh, uh, biology, some uh, computer science, and they got into a much more wide variety of schools. Uh, we have students who got into Berkeley, we got students who got into Loyola Marymount, um, in Los Angeles, uh, we have students at UMBC, a number of Terrapins again, and the beautiful thing for them when they get there is the general studies degree that they got while they were in high school knocks out all of their gen ed credits. So they're able to take 300 and 400 level courses as soon as they get to college that concentrate on their major. And from what we hear from definitely all of our, our Terrapins is they are surrounded by students who are nothing but jealous because they're not sitting in a 300 seat lecture hall for Communications 108. They did that with 18 of their closest friends at a classroom at Northwood High School. So Montgomery College professors come to Northwood and students are able to take their classes, uh, their college classes at Northwood through 11th grade. And then only in 12th grade do they travel to the two campuses, Rockville or Tacoma Park, whichever one is closest for them, or sometimes whichever one has the class at the time that they want to take. Um, and they're able to be full-time college students in their senior year. Many of our students qualify for the Montgomery College grant, uh, and that is uh, parents with an adjusted gross income of $100,000 or less. Students qualify for, uh, if they qualify for free and reduced meals as well, they qualify to have all of their tuition fees and books paid for. So a number of the students got an associate's degree for free while they were at Northwood High School. So if you would like to reduce the cost of, of completing a, a college degree, many of them are gonna take more than two years after high school, but it's because they're choosing to do things like double, triple major, two majors and a minor, and all of these things are possible because again, They've knocked out their gen eds, and they're still going to finish in about three years. And be ready to join the working world with the rest of us at the age of 21. Won't that be great? So if you would like to uh, do something like that, Northwood High School, you will want to check it in the selections that are available to you um, in your MyMCPS when you are uh, making a choice of a different program because you guys are from outside the DCC. Uh, I'll be out there afterwards if you have any questions. And next up, Lori from Rockville. Good evening. Um, I am the diploma, the IB coordinator at Rockville High School. Rockville High School has been an IB school for quite a number of years now, and we have um, the two IB programs, the diploma as well as the career program. The one that will be in the open application process will be the IB career program. The IB career program has the same IB philosophy that you heard described related to Springbrook. It, the goal is to de develop critical thinking skills. There's an emphasis put on research, writing, 
um, communication skills. The whole IB philosophy is infused through the career program the same way it's infused through the diploma program. However, the big difference is it's combined with a career focus. And so the IB career program, which is IB's most recent rollout, uh, we've had, we've graduated several classes at Rockville, and we will have four programs that will be open to the whole county. One of those is the Project Lead the Way. We have two programs for Project Lead the Way. One is the Advanced Engineering Program, where students complete four courses in engineering. The capstone project is called Engineering Design and Development, where students have to find a practical problem that they'd like to solve and design something to solve that problem, and then they make a prototype for that design, so they get that hands-on experience. And all of the Project Lead the Way programs have that option. And so one of our, we have two Project Lead the Way programs. One is the engineering on one. The other one is the biomedical program, and that one is the same idea. Students take a four-course sequence of courses, and then again end with a capstone project where, again, they're looking at a real-world problem in the biomedical field. And so that's what happens with the Project Lead the Way programs, and those are two of our application programs. The other one is our hospitality management program. The focus there is on the culinary arts that involves learning how to correctly manage uh, work with, within the culinary industry, as well as um, it involves an internship experience for students as well. And then the last program is a computer science program where students work on programming and coding, and the focus there is on the development of skills for computer science. So all, now what happens with students that are in the career program, they follow one of the four career pathways, but then in addition to that, they combine that with IB study. So for example, what often happens is a student who is taking uh, biomed, for example, is likely to take IB biology, perhaps IB chemistry. You'll make your course selections based upon interest. And the career program, students can take two. They can take four. Students in my program take anywhere from two. Some of them take five. Some of them take six. It's really, and then also what's, because of the flexible nature of the program, many students who are in the IB career program also take AP classes. They take a mix of AP and IB, and that's not at all unusual for students in the career program. And so basically, it's a program that allows the high-level academics combined with a technical edge. And we have pa pamphlets on the program. We'll be having our open house um, to talk more in detail about what ha goes on in the program on October 30th at Rockville High School, if you have any further questions. Thank you. Thank you all. Okay, at this time, we're gonna review the admission process, frequently asked questions, and the timeline. Let's get started with next steps. If you're excited about participating in one of these programs. Step one, you and your student will enter the MyMCPS student or parent portal, and you will access a document called the eligibility report. The eligibility report is found in your document library. It is unique to you. So in other words, if you get into the portal for your friend, it won't give you the correct information. So each person, has their own eligibility report. It's based on your current address and it's based on your middle school. If you're not sure about what school you uh, would, what school would be your base high school, you can refer to the lo school locator on the MCPS website. Step two, there'll be a link. The link is for the regional and countywide common high school application. This is a one-stop shop. Any of the application programs, whether they be interest-based or criteria-based, you will be filling out this application. Remember, this is different from and in addition to the choice form. The choice form has to be completed. This is an option. But if you want any of the programs at all, that you uh, find that you're eligible or that you have interest, this is the one place where you will apply for all of them. 
please make sure you enter your emails correctly. For students, it's your MCPS Google email. Applications are due November 1st. I think you're going to hear that quite a few times because I don't want you to miss that deadline. Step three, once you've completed your application, you will receive a receipt email. Actually, there will be two emails. One will go to the parent or guardian, and the other will go to the student's email. So this is why it's important for you to enter the information correctly. Okay, if you are choosing a criteria-based program, let's say the math uh, magnet at Blair High School, that's a criteria-based program, you will then find in your letter a link for additional information. You'll need to click on that link and support apply additional information. There's a short essay, there are a few questions, and you, you'll need to also enter teacher names because your teachers will be completing recommendations. Step three, your receipt document will also come in that same email. They are going to look different. I'm gonna go back, whoops, sorry. Go back, you see there's the email, and there's the document. In the email, you will have an attachment for this document. The information is exactly the same, it's just formatted differently. And what that information is, it's a listing of all the programs for which you have applied. Now some frequently asked questions. How do I know which regional or countywide application programs my grade eight student is eligible? If you've been listening, you would already know the answer. It's in your eligibility report. Sorry. How do I learn about my local high school options? All the consortia, as you saw today, there are many programs available at your local high school, whether you get assigned to Springbrook or um, Paint Branch or Blake High School. There are many programs at all of them. The programs in this portion are all optional. So when you're trying to decide, consider everything. Think about who you are, what it is you want in your high school experience, and consider the local options as well as the special programs. Everyone completes a choice form. Application is only for those who are interested. What's involved? For the lottery programs, the interest programs, you just have to complete the application. We run the lottery when the number of interested students exceeds the number of seats. So if there are 100 seats available and 90 students select that, then 90 students will be invited. We only run the lottery if we need to. What's involved for criteria-based? There are multiple measures used to determine whether or not you'll be invited to participate in those programs. One of them could be a test, and that test would be taken on December 7th. It's a Saturday. If you are selecting one of those in your application, then more information will be sent to you about that, about the test location. Is transportation provided? If the school you're choosing is within the consortia, then yes, you will have your regular uh, stop that you would get on to go to any of the three schools. For example, if you chose IB at Springbrook. However, if you choose the Rockville program or Richard Montgomery or any of the others, the Northwood program, they have centrally located stops. This is just a reference again to the timeline of all the different information meetings. If there's something that sparked this evening and you want to get more information, please go to one of these other evenings. I know this is a lot of evenings to ask you to come out, but there is not really another better way for you to get all of the information and get all of your questions answered. Just a reminder, if you go to Poolsville, they have their meetings split up by 
the alphabet. So first part of the alphabet goes at a different time than second part of the alphabet. Continuing with the timeline, applications are due. Thank you very much. That means you are paying attention. Applications are due November 1st. And when are the choice forms due? And when is my birthday? True, true, true. I'm November 1st. What a great day. I'm going to have so much fun looking at all those applications. Once you've submitted your application and if need be some supplemental information in late January, early February, you'll be notified as to what schools um, you're being invited to attend, which programs. And then in late February, that's when you will need to provide us the information telling us which program you have selected. Do you need more information? Come on out to the table fair. I'm also going to head out there. Be happy to answer your questions. Um, go to the MCPS website. If you have questions about programs, contact someone in the Office of Curriculum Instructional Programs. If you have questions about admissions process, that would be our office, the Division of Consortia Choice and Application Program Services. There are evaluations. When I went through the handouts, I didn't point that out, but there is an evaluation in there. Please complete it. We really do value your feedback. I made changes in today's presentation based on feedback I got from the last presentation I did. We know you have choices as to how you spend your evening. I'm so glad that you chose it to spend it with us, and I hope that you found this to be valuable and helpful in your choice process. Thank you for coming. Good night.